Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, concluding our brief look at all of the windows that appear throughout the different versions of Harmony. And a little disclaimer before we begin, turns out that as of Harmony 12.2, the X sheet has in fact been added to Harmony Essentials. So I encourage you to have a look at the video where I talked about the windows that appear in Harmony Advance and you can see a little bit about how the X sheet works. Remember all the features regarding it may not be around in Essentials, but hey, it is there, so that's something. This is Harmony 12 Premium, the top end version, and there's only a couple of windows that really get added here, but are they pretty extraordinary? Yeah. Yeah, they are. This is the node view and the node library. These things work in conjunction with one another. And what it is, is another way of looking at your layers, right? So this is the timeline. And if I add a bunch of drawings like that, they all appear in a list. And over in the node view, they appear in kind of like a mind map flow charty kind of way. So you can see I can pull them all out and organize them like that. And the way that this thing works is think of it like rather than a list, you're spreading your layers out on a table and you can shuffle them about and you can wire them together in any way that you wish. So this is the node library down here. It contains all the effects uh, that you may want to use. Uh, there are tons of them. And uh, so this is filter, the filter category, for example. So you can see things like blurs and glows and color scale and all different ways of manipulating the shape and what you see. So if I draw, yep, scribble. That's the best way to go. No, it's not, but whatever. Okay, so drawing has the spittily black spiral nonsense on it. So in render view, we can't see anything because it's black on black. But now I'm going to pull out a glow node and pin it in there open up its parameters by pressing on that yellow box and it's the layer properties panel opens up and I can start doing just what I did in the essentials video and pump out its glow pretty damn far like that. So, you know, that's on 20, uh, but it's kind of faint, isn't it? So I can also pump up its intensity like that. But so far we haven't seen anything that we can't already do in both Essentials and Advanced. So what is the advantage of having them arranged in a big stringy mess as opposed to a nice organized list? And that is you can pull strings out more than once. Okay, so there is now one string that goes in raw and it has just the black shapes and another one that goes through the glow and the blue one appears. So what happens if I pull two of these out? Oh, it gets super bright or I can make a second glow and have that one go through and maybe this one will be a completely different color, like say yellow. Blur that one out a little bit. So I've done a video on actually specifically making glows using the node editor before. Uh, so go have a look at that and you can see how the glows work and how you can fix a few other things together. But I'm just going to briefly scroll through some of these effects and you can see just how crazy they can get. And the true wonder and power of this feature is how you can combine effects together to create things that previously never before even existed. So in my favorites, uh, I really like to use apply peg transformation. This allows you to move something after it's already been pegged before. So it'll let you have one object exist in several places at the same time and animate in several different positions at once. Blur Gaussian is just a regular blur. Uh, camera, you can put more than one camera in the scene and then animate it around using that. Uh, cutter is like a masking system. So if you combine cutters with glows in particular ways, you can create an inner glow or you can fire things out in all kinds of just crazy psycho directions. Uh, what else have we got? Generator, you can make like a noise mat and then combine that with a few other things and say create water ripple effects or fire that's kind of, you know, wafting off and all that kind of, you know, like a heat haze effect. That's, that's what I was going for. Uh, deformation is all for setting up your bone hierarchy. You can make really complicated skeletal rigs using this system. Particle effects is pretty nuts. These are some of the examples that it comes with. So, uh, <laughs> what's fairies do? I've, I've seen it before, but I'll show you. And come on out, plug that in. And... 
play. There you go. So a few fairies fly past and they shoot all these tiny little particles out. And inside you can see how a particle system is kind of rigged together. So it's quite complicated and it's a bit daunting to start to learn at first, but when you get the hang of it, this thing has no end. I compare Harmony quite closely to After Effects because of this feature and the quite large price gap between Advanced and uh, Premium is pretty much worth it for this feature alone. There's a bunch of other stuff that's added in regards to tools and features, but we're trying to just talk about the windows that are added. And these are the two, the node library and the node view. They work together very, very well. And I use it every day. It's a true compositing tool and very, very cool. And there is way too much to just show in one introduction video. So expect there to be full series on compositing in Harmony one day. So if this is something that you want to see more of, do let me know and it will slowly start to work its way up the level of priorities. Another addition to Harmony that I've been meaning to talk about. I thought it was added in advanced, but apparently it's only available in premium. It isn't a tool, nor is it a window, but just one little switch that is a complete game changer. I've got three layers here, labeled one, two, and three respectively, and over in layer properties, there is a single button added called enable 3D. So what does this do? Because 3D space already exists and we can still make use of it. So I'm gonna pull layer one back a bit and layer two back a bit as well. So 3D still works. Why is this button here? Under rotate, you can see it still only rotates in a two dimensional space and wherever the pieces move, they always face the camera directly. So you can get parallax out of it, but you can't get true 3D out of it. Well, that's what this button does. Watch closely. See that? It changes from being a two-dimensional wheel to a three-dimensional one that allows us to do this. And we can rotate the layers all around. This includes the camera as well uh, in a full true three-dimensional space. So for example, I can move these pieces around like this. You can probably see what I'm doing is creating basically a little room. So you can move inside three-dimensional spaces and create your scene how you want. So that's all I wanted to point out in this video. I hope it sparks your interest. If you want to learn more about Harmony Premium, let me know. Have some fun and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again and I'll see you again soon.